Welcome to Map It Marketing for small business owners who want to become more confident and capable in their marketing. I'm Rachel Claver, and I'm a small business owner just like you. I've learned that there are so many different things that we are supposed to do all the time. And trying to work it all out is quite frankly often very confusing. In this podcast, we're going to explore what those things are and whether you need to pay attention to them. Ready? Let's get started. Imagine taking just a few moments to create a short personalized video to someone that secured a deal worth thousands of dollars in sales, both in client work and later referrals. That's exactly what happened to me a few years ago, and it was the first time I was trying out a cool app called Bonjour. And trust me, the video was pretty casual. I was sitting on my sofa at the end of the day and all I was doing was talking about how much I was looking forward to sending them a proposal and what I had enjoyed about meeting them. It was it was pretty easy. I'm so looking forward to chatting with Casey Hill today. He's the head of growth at Bonjour and he's going to talk to us about how personalized video can play such an integral part in the different stages of the customer journey to build trust, create community and get those sales. As someone who's always looking for creative ways to grab attention, I reckon Bonjour was the perfect fit for Casey. I think we're going to also talk about his fascination with LinkedIn and Quora, as well as the fact he created a card game called Archon, because that looks kind of cool. I've recommended Bonjour during my MapIt events and to clients because it's a perfect fit for some of them. A real estate agent we work with doubled his sign-up rate using a Bonjour after the initial meeting. An e-commerce business started getting a lot more reviews on Google and more repeat customers. And a coach we suggested to it found it was a great way to connect with her clients instead of weekly calls. She sends them a personalized email, uh, video, and it helps them feel like they connect with her without her having to book that into her diary. I'm sure Casey's going to walk us through a bunch of other uses, so let's find out and learn along with him today. I'm super excited to find out what I could be using this for, and hopefully for you too, you can find ways that you could adapt this idea to your business. Hi, and welcome to this um, episode eight of Map It Marketing, and thank you so much for tuning in. I know there's lots of people you can be listening to, and I am loving all the positive feedback that I get from people who say that it's their favorite thing to listen to as they're going to work, or some people are even escaping away from their family to go and have a quiet listen on a walk, which I always think is great for that balance of you know mental health and real life, real life business stuff. Um, I'm really excited to um, introduce to you our guest today, Casey Hill. He is the head of growth of Bonjour, but he's also got a kind of a couple of passions around two social media platforms. One of them I know a bit about and the other one I have no idea about. So I'm going to ask him about that. But also he had he used um, Kickstarter to fund a really cool card game that I took a look at and went, I'm not the demographic for, but I feel like he needs to share with that before we jump in and talk about Bonjour and, and how personalized video can help us. So welcome, Casey. It's lovely to see you. Do you want to just jump in and tell us a little bit more first about that card game? Because it was really fascinating to have a look at it. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Excited to be here. Um, and yeah, so so growing up, I've always been really passionate about cards and board games. I grew up as part of a family of seven. Um, so people, oh, wow. we were a big family and people were always kind of, you know, doing their own thing. But board games were something that brought everyone to the table and we all kind of spent quality time around that. So that had a big impact in me growing up. And when I got older, I also come from a family of entrepreneurs. My, my father has run multiple businesses. My grandpa ran a business, cousins run businesses. So I kind of grew doomed. up in that. I grew up in that world. Um, and they always encouraged me to, to go out and kind of test um, doing business in areas mm. I was passionate about. Um, and when I was in college, I was kind of thinking about, well, what the heck am I passionate about? Trying to kind of uh, gauge that out and eventually landed that one of the things I was passionate about was uh, board games from my childhood. So I decided to create this game um, built it out over the course of a couple of years, starting in 2015, um, and eventually 800% funded it on Kickstarter, um, sold thousands of copies all over the world, um, and learned a ton of lessons about small business from fulfilling a product mm-hmm. to running marketing, to running promotion and PR. Um, we worked. I worked with some influencers that had some awesome impact. And so it taught me 
um, a lot of lessons from my day job because I've worked for the last 10 years um, kind of consulting and working with small businesses across a lot of different conduits, working with different tech mm -hmm. companies, but always working in that kind of SMB, small to medium sized business world. And so the, the board game experiment slash card game experiment was something that taught me a ton about what those small business owners go through on a day to day. I started to really understand you know, when I had to make my own website, when I'm not a WordPress designer, right? Yeah. And I had to do the marketing. I had to pick all these pieces up. It like drew those into perspective. And um, even when I ran that Kickstarter, I spent about ten thousand dollars total um, in ad ad spend on wow. Facebook. So I started getting That's behind. That's a huge investment, right? It was. It was. It was incredibly scary, um, and it ended up working out for me. But yeah, it was a huge, huge learning lesson. And and we also at our at the end of it, I managed up to seven people at one time, including artists, videographers, wow. graphic designers. Um, we had a play testing crew. And so that was also a huge lesson in learning how to manage people um, and learning how to work with creatives. So yeah, long-winded answer to your question. But no, it was, it was, it was a really interesting. Um, I actually have a very, I'm very um, embarrassed about my failed um, stationery line. I had this really cool marketing stationery thing. And the product itself is great, gets great feedback. But I had exactly that same situation of I can I consult, we create strategies, we help all that stuff. When you're trying to do a side hustle on top of everything else, you realize how much work is involved having to do all those things. It's actually huge. And it did really teach me a lot of lessons. I didn't do any of that kind of lead up marketing or um, realize, you know, really investing that time. You do forget, I think, sometimes when you're in our roles, it is really important to remember how hard it can be to put marketing as a priority when there's all those other mother, mar, moving parts, isn't it? it? It is tricky. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and when you're a small business, you don't have this huge budget, right? To draw all these eyes. So you, you have to be creative. You have to really find those unique ways to differentiate yourself mm -hmm. and grab attention to have people come back to you specifically instead of, you know, those, those big name brands, because I think, you know, if you always fight on price, it's just not the world you want to be in when you're a small so business, true. you want to you want to have that unique differentiator. Now, I feel, feel like that was a perfect segue to talk about Bonjuro, but I have a burning question for you before we do that. I got yes. to um, come into connection with you and got to find out a bit about how you think on LinkedIn, which is a platform I really love. But when we um, when you sent me your bio and I had a look at it, you have used a platform called Quora. Now, I don't understand Quora, and I know I, I really want to focus on Bonjoro, but do you want to give me like a really short mm -hmm. thing of why it's a good thing for small businesses and, and should they be on it? Yeah, absolutely. So so Quora, for anyone who isn't familiar, is a question and answer platform. So the way that it works is people can ask questions, any kind of questions that they want, and other people can hop in and they can answer those questions. Okay. And if a question is popular and a lot of people have the same question, you can choose to quote unquote, follow a question. So if, if someone says, how do I drive more leads for my business, right? It's a pretty broad question. Yeah. You might have a lot of people that would follow it and people will then start to put answers out. And depending on the quality of those answers, different people can upvote quality answers they find helpful. And then the more upvotes, kind of the more attention you get. And that's kind of the way that, that Cora works. And so for me, I kind of got started. I just always liked short form writing. Mm. And one of the nice things about Cora versus some of the other social platforms is you basically are uncapped in the amount of writing that you can do. So on LinkedIn, for instance, you can't do 10 posts in one day, right? Yeah. You're going to get no exposure on the, the algorithm doesn't allow that. But because Quora is based on a certain search inquiry, so if you have people that are searching, how do I convert more trials? How do I do better on platform X? How do I Got do whatever? It. You could you could spend five hours, write a ton of content. And so for me, because I'm a little bit of maybe an obsessive personality, I kind of went <laughs> full wind into Quora and just started writing. Oh. You know, in 2020, I wrote 900 answers. Okay. So, I have to avoid this platform because I also get obsessed about platforms like this. I'm currently doing TikTok and I'm obsessed with creating like five videos a day. So I, I, I think I need to, but it sounds really cool. It's actually kind of, I kind of think it's like a business person's Reddit. Yeah. 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 And there's, and there's obviously consumers on there too, but it's, um, you know, look, I, I'd say the final parting note on that is if you really like to write, and you like short form writing where you're kind of uncapped in the amount, then Cora might be something interesting for you. To look awesome. At and I know we're talking about Bonjour, but do you want to send me a link to your little coursey thing? And we'll chuck it in the show notes if anyone wants to find out about it. May as well, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, of awesome. course. Yeah, happy to share that with people. Cool. Okay, so now let's let's jump into what we're actually talking about. So you are the growth um, head of growth at Bonjoro, um, and it was it was it an originally an Australian company? It is. Well, it still is an Australian company. Yeah, but you're not um, in so Australia. I'm not out of Australia. That's correct. So we're a global team. It's one of the really cool parts about um, Bonjoro is that we work with people all over the world. We got people in the US, we have people in the UK, South Africa, Philippines. Um, we're all spread out. So it's a global team. Um, but we, we we coordinate, we make it work. We keep that culture strong despite that. I love um, it. And we, we have a really good time. I love the vibe of bon- Bonjoro. I first heard about it at a free Um, course that I went to and I now run free courses because of that free course and and I um, had a wee play and I said it as I said in the intro the first time I ever used it I actually won a customer who went on to spend thousands with us and refer a whole lot of other people to us so spending 10 minutes on a sofa was really good use of my time just sending a personalized video Um, but do you want to just go through briefly what is the concept of Bonjour because it is really simple, but it's also super clever. And I don't know how it kind of manages to get into people's inboxes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Bonjoro is a personal video platform. And basically the way that it works is it works from a task list of to do's. So let's say that you have um, 20 customers that you want to reach out to in a certain application. You can upload a list of 20 people. You can click on a task, either on your phone or your desktop. You quickly record a video And what's going to happen is it's going to send it to someone's inbox and it's going to have a a GIF, right? Or an active motion of say you smiling or whatever the first couple seconds of your video are. And so first big thing is it's not coming through as an attachment because sometimes people ask are like, well, if you send a video, is not going to, you know, land in spam or are people going to open it? One of the really cool parts about the technology is people are seeing a preview of the actual video they're going to get. So they're more likely to click on it. Then it takes people to a nice branded page where the video plays, and there's also the ability for you to have a call to action of something for them to do next. So another important part about Bonjoro is kind of driving some sort of deeper engagements. If you're using it as a welcome, you might just have that be join our Facebook group or check out this helpful resource. Um, But you could also use it for like cross-selling. So for an existing customer, you might use this as a way to connect with them and let them know about a cool new product you're offering or an upcoming webinar, an upcoming event. Um, so really the focus around Bonjoro is to drive deeper engagement, either on the sales side or on the kind of customer support slash customer success side. Um, and so we try to make that really easy. And the other really important part of it is we also have a lot of connections in to people's existing tech. So that's Mm. a big differentiator for us in the marketplace versus other video tools. We'll tie in with say your Shopify store or with your CRM system or your email automation system. So what that means is as soon as someone makes a purchase, for instance, you just get a notification pops up on your phone and says, hey, Casey made a purchase. You can click and record. So you have this really timely response to people um, and things don't fall through the cracks. You know, Mm -hmm. one of the challenges is if you're always like, oh, yeah, I'm going to use video. But if it's kind of, you know, haphazard, if there's not an organized system of knowing exactly who to record for, a lot of times people will fall through the cracks and then one person got a video and the other person didn't get a video and it's less organized. So the great thing about yeah. Bonjoro is we'll give you that list. Yeah, because um, one of the reasons I started using it and I liked it is we're active campaign certified consultants. So we implement it into businesses um, that would, would use it. And on some of the e-commerce, some are coaches, some are service-based businesses. But the fact that it can integrate makes it very easy for you to be able to then go and contact people. And to be honest, I'm feeling a bit of the guilt because I think I could be using a lot more because I love video and I love personalization. And I've actually written down, okay, here's a big list of stuff I need to be doing with it. Um, I, I will say um, one of the re- ways I've recently used it, which has helped us, is we have a Facebook group called Map It Marketing. And we've had, since the podcast, we've had a bigger influx of people who come in. They give us their email address. And we were getting quite a lot of unsubscribes on that first email with spam complaints saying, I never signed up for this. Uh, yeah, you did. But, but besides that, I found what we do now is before they get that email, I send them a personalized bonjour telling them, thank you, you're on your email list. And that has stopped that, that unsubscribe. And they come back and they tell me why they're excited to be in the group and give me really positive feedback. And it creates that relationship right at the beginning with people that we're really engaged with. Yeah, that's so spot on. And I think that's such an important part of what Bonjour is doing, especially in that first touch. I always tell Mm. people, you know, Bonjour has a lot of applications, but that first touch is a huge opportunity. Whenever that person is getting exposed to your brand, if you start that off with a human connection, 
it just totally changes the dynamic, right? Because no one else is doing that. None of the other brands or, or programs they're a part of have that kind of touch. So it brings that person in and it gets them talking. You know, that, that's what you mentioned too, yeah. which I think is such a good point of this. If you can get a new person who's coming through communicating about their goals or what they're concerned about, that is the golden ticket to getting a long-term customer who not only continues to be a patron of yours, but tells people about you and advocates for you. That, that's the initiation point. So that's so important. And if you make it funny or if it's something cool, they may even share it on their social networks. So they're actually quite easy. I mean, I don't want to pressure anyone to being funny. Like if you're trying to be funny, you probably won't be. But but if you are, <laughs> if you do something that people get really touched by, you know, we have become people who share on platforms. If we, if, like I know for me, if I'm delighted by a brand, I, I will naturally share it because I'm like, how cool is this? What amazing ad? Or, you know, and so it does give an opportunity for you to potentially go past that initial person as well, um, doesn't it? Like, I mean, people, you want yeah. that surprise and delight. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's a huge part. And we see that all the time. So I get tagged in all the time on like LinkedIn as an example, also on Twitter, where someone will basically say, got the most amazing welcome experience from one of our customers, mm. right? And they'll share that video. And so you're a hundred percent right. I think one of the things I talk all the time with people about is how customer lifetime value, people often view it too narrowly. They think oh, about yes. it just as how much someone spends with you. And I always say a really important thing you need to remember is also the advocacy component. If that person's sharing, if that person's telling other people, the world that we live in today is driven by reviews and customer proof. People like to talk to other people who've made that buy decision first. And so if your customers are advocating for you and they're the ones who are putting it out, that's going to be the most compelling um, kind of like proof that you can get as a brand. I love that you said that the world we are in today is driven by customer proof because I I truly believe that that is one of those kind of, one of um, a previous podcast pa- podcast guest talks about the secret source like that is the secret source of that growth because it's basically the old Chinese whispers of like telling people oh my gosh have you seen this and it just needs that critical mass of enough people to do that doesn't it to get that generation of just that natural growth and you're not paying for that it's organic yeah exactly that's the best part right you're getting that organic word of mouth growth yeah, I've got a question actually, because I feel um, I, I'm I'm like <clears throat> 49. So, but one of the things I've learned, I've been in social media for years, and I, one of the things I found fascinating about it is one, it allows you to do things like this. I can connect with you. You're over on the other side of the world, and we can make those connections in a worldwide way in a much easier way. But in the same token, you know, there's more social anxiety. There's more a feeling of a disconnect. I don't go to shops. I shop online like completely and all those sort of things. And I know you guys have just come out of COVID, COVID-19. You, you know, you can come out in the public now and discover that there's a sun, um, you know, and all those sort of things. <laughs> but that like that kind of break, do you think that's one of the reasons video is working so well, these personalized videos, is because there's that drive for human connection. Like there's this thing that we've lost that we're trying – it's a way to bring that back a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think there's a couple things behind this. So number one, a hundred percent, right? Like in the past, business was always done. If you go back hundreds of years, right? It was all human to human. People would come yeah. into a shop, they would meet. And as we've begun to automate and we've kind of moved into this digital landscape, more and more of that has been lost. And so this kind of feeds into that thing I was kind of alluding to earlier, which is like, if you're going to be an e-commerce company and you want to differentiate yourself from Amazon and you don't want it to be a race to the bottom, you need to stick in people's memories, right? And so one of the things I thought was really interesting, I was listening to a TED talk on memory and he he said an example that always stuck with me. So I like to share it where he basically told two different groups. One of them, he said, I want you to remember someone whose name is Baker. And the other group, he said, I want you to remember someone whose profession is a Baker. And he went back and he asked those people later, which one they remember. He basically tested how much each group remembered. And the one where it was a profession was substantially like they had over two, it was between two to three times more likely to remember. And the reason was because with the profession, there was the context of many people have been to a bakery. Mm. People know they can imagine the smells. They can imagine the little hats. They can, they have all this context in their brain. If you just say a person's name is Baker, it's very, it's just a name. It's, it's in a vacuum. So Mm. I think with video, you have facial expression, you have tone, you have body language, you have all these things that we just can't deliver in a text format. I think that's the context component that makes it more so magical is these are the kind of thing where if you get on there and you're warm and you're effusive and yeah. you kind of have that, that kind of energy, you're able to translate that to the person you're interacting with. And I think that's an important part of 
making it a memorable experience where someone walks away and they think, wow, that was really special. Like I'm, I'm excited. You know, they kind of feel energetic after getting something like that. Because I talk a lot about how one of the most important marketing messages we need to have is trust, building trust, and that but all your marketing, if you've built trust, sales are really easy because if someone trusts you and you say, you need to do this, they go, oh, yeah, of course I do. Um, and yeah. I think that's one of the things that video does, doesn't it? It cuts through that a lot faster than text and nurture sequences and all those things I love do. It just seems to push that further forward. Yeah, 100%. And this is a really important thing I want to emphasize to people too, because I come from the world of automation. I've worked in inbound marketing mm. tools for the last 10 years. And so I absolutely am not against automation. I think they play together perfectly, right? I think that when you have opportunities where you need to tell everyone the same thing, like an update, right? Yeah. Those are great. Those are great applications yeah. for using automations, right? It, it would be a sensible spot to let people know. But when you're doing a personal introduction or you're celebrating a milestone or you're like, there's these key points in the customer journey that can really benefit from a human touch, that's where putting video in, in a mm-hmm. way that's easy, the way that's connected into your systems, like you were noting, active campaigns integration is awesome because we're actually built into active campaigns interface, meaning that you could just place the Bonjoro element right inside of an automation map. It makes it so seamless for you just to have that as a part of your existing processes, but to still have that really personal one-to-one experience. I absolutely love that. Um, and and with this, like when, you, when you're talking about it, like why do you feel that Bonjuro hits the mark with that? Do you, you know, what is it that, that Bonjuro does that makes it easy? Is it the fact that it is a GIF in that lo- so it looks like it's just an easy email and just clicks through? You know, you could, what makes Bonjuro's platform such, you know, and what I'm trying to say is that obviously like we, we we've got video and we could just we could i could just do a video on my phone and send it to someone yeah. why is it better just to do it with a bonjour with a bonjour app yeah a number of reasons so the first one is and we talked about this a little bit at the very beginning but if you were to go on your iphone and you were to make a video and you were to email it to someone first thing is it's going to come through as an attachment yeah it does so that's, <laughs> that's going to be really really tough for you to be able to inbox because mm. they, they can't see anything and if you get a message it's like an attachment they're like not exactly sure what it is, especially if it's a video attachment, they don't know what it is. You're just not going to get a good engagement on that versus if someone sees the actual video, if they see you smiling, waving to them, it becomes very clear what they're going to receive. And so the first kind of part of it is just engagement and landing in your primary inbox. You know, I won't go down the rabbit hole of deliverability, but that's been a background I've had for the last five years is working in as doing postmaster work and in the deliverability world. So one of the big challenges we have is just inboxing. So that's the first kind of component. But the second component is even if you were to say, okay, well, I'm going to take a video and I don't want it to be an attachment. So I'm going to make a thumbnail and I'm going to attach it to the mm-hmm. thumbnail and then I'm going to write the subject line. You start to realize that it's going to take you so much time. And, and one of the big things that Bonjoro does different from some of the other major video platforms on the market is that integration component, right? Because there's lots of video tools that like, let's say you have an extension inside of your Gmail. They're like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. I just go to my email and I send it. That's great for like a one-off application, but it's not great if you want to use it as part of a process. It's not Mm -hmm. great if you're like, I want to welcome every customer. I want to respond to new inquiries. I want to, you know, touch base with VIPs. None of the other video tools are going to be able to do that as easily because they're not working with your existing tech. And so I think working with your existing tech removes a big layer of, of friction, which is just the timeliness that video takes. You want to make it as easy as possible. Absolutely. Because that. that's one of the things people often say, oh my gosh, well, how much time is it going to take? Um, I did 40 of them on Saturday. I try and do my my ones for my t- new members of my, my Mappet group um, all at once because then I can just come in the zone. Yep. And that, But it only took me about 20 minutes. And, and that sounds like a long time, but actually for 40 individual touch points with people, that's very much worth it. Um, one of the things I do have a lot of our clients and a lot of listeners have a problem with is actually that whole thing of video as a whole, like they have a whole lot of blocks. I do have a saying, which I've shared in podcasts before, which is you've never killed a man with your face, which I think is quite an important one because it's true. Like people are not shrieking at horror when you walk into a room. So I think we're okay. Um, but, but with, do you have that? Do you have to try and help educate people on using video around just getting over that fear of showing up on video and not looking like a complete idiot. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. So the number one, the number one reservation people have is exactly that, to Mm. be honest, right? The number one over everything else is people just are like, they're not, they're uneasy about being behind video. How am I going to look? How presentable? I think we're so used to video almost like in a social context that it's like people are having to make that mental switch 
um, to like, this is in a business context. And so the first thing I tell people is the whole point of personal video is about familiarity. You want to be relatable. You want to seem like a normal person. One of the things I tell people off the bat is if your cat jumps through the background or your kid interrupts you or whatever else happens, keep running the video, yeah, right? Because that's, it humanizes you. You are a person just like them. And the point of the video is to say, you're important enough that I'm going to take time out of my busy day to make this for you because you matter that much. I love and that. So I think that's, that's the sentiment. And so with that in mind, you don't need to be polished, right? In a, in a professional video, I say, in professional video, it's often aspirational, right? And in personal video, it's more about familiarity and trust, as you noted earlier. So familiarity is what builds trust. And so I always encourage people, test it out, (laughs) try it, see how people receive. Because one of the beauties of a personal video, I think, is what often hooks people is the feedback and response. When you send that personal video and someone says, this is so special, I've never gotten something like that. That's where people know they're like, okay, this is pretty cool. You know, they see the appreciation that that's bringing to them on a brand level. Um, so it's not perfect. And when people start, they're still going to retake videos a bunch of times and everyone does it. It's part of the learning process, but I encourage people to keep that end result, that end goal in mind and, and stay persistent until you get a handful of them out. And then I think people usually, you know, kind of catch their momentum or catch their rhythm with it once they've gotten mm-hmm. through that first, you know, couple dozen videos. Do you um do you think that part of the 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 benefit of Bonjoro is the fact that it also can strengthen that position if you are growing? Like you talked about how when you had um your card game archon, that one of the things that you learned is you had seven people at one time. But you might have wanted to if you were if you I don't know if you were using Bonjoro back then, it might not have been existed then. But if you'd used it, you could have potentially been the person that sent that email out saying, Hi, I'm the creator of this game. And it creates a safety net if there's a problem or anything like that, it pushes it back and solidifies that this is the person behind the brand. Yeah, hundred percent. So I did use Bonjoro. Oh, um, did that's you? actually one of my first exposures. It's so I would, cool. I think I would think buyers, I would send seasonal messages. That's um, awesome. And, and absolutely, like going back to the why is this different? You have obviously board games that are run by, you know, Hasbro and these huge companies, mm-hmm. right? And so what is this small founder? Nobody knows who they are. How are you staying top of mind? Well, when someone who's a creator, like if you're an author, if you're someone who built a, a certain piece of content, if you're someone who designed a game, that I think is especially mm. impactful because someone, you know, who, which of us wouldn't love to get a mess from our favorite author, right? Like that would be so cool. We bought their book and they were like, thank you so much. Yeah. Like, that would be really special. I think for most people. So I think with board games, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. You're, you're humanizing it, you're bringing it down and you're giving them kind of this special treat of like, oh, wow, this is the person who designed this and built this. Because one of the things I have made a note of that I'm going to start using Bonjoro for is we have a team of strategists and often because I do the podcast or I run events, people bond to me. So they kind of, it's kind of like I'm a duck, another little duckling, and they just want to follow me everywhere. And I love it. But sometimes one of our other strategists is better suited to them. So what I want to use Bonjoro for, and I've made a note that I must start using it for this, is to give my team accounts. And when they have been given a person, I get them to send a Bonjoro with an introduction of saying who they are and just saying that they're looking forward to them. So that person's bonding can shift from me to somebody else, because I think that's a really important thing too. We talk about trust, but we're not helping them build trust in this other person that I'm saying is good. A hundred percent. I think that's I think that's a great use case. And I think that by having personal videos that connect in with whatever someone's key challenge is, that's part of the trust. So as mm. an example, one of the major use cases I initially used Bonjoro for, for was demo no-shows. So before I came to Bonjoro, uh-huh. when I worked at a company called Entreport, I used it because we had, we had a high rate of demo no-shows and we were trying to think like, how do we get people to show up? So as soon as someone booked, we had it hooked up with Calendly, we would produce a Bonjoro task, we'd put a, a human face behind it, and then the rep would also be able to build their trust. They'd be able to say, hey, I see that you're an e-commerce business, we deal with a ton of people in the e-commerce space, or I see that you're a membership, or I see that you're a whatever. And then suddenly someone had a human face behind that meeting. It wasn't just like, oh, there's this generic sales demo and it's kind of easy to blow off. It's like this person took time out of their day to talk about my Mm. website, to introduce themselves. And suddenly we sliced 20% of that no-show rate off, right? It's amazing. a huge huge impact. And and that all came down to building trust with that person they're about to meet, not just viewing them as, oh, that's just a salesperson. 
but this is an expert in this area who's really going to be able to add value to me. Boom, that's a game changer. Because I think one of the things that I often get like pushback on is this takes time. And I'm always saying, don't look at the time it's taking now. Look at the long-term impact of that. And if it's bringing you customers or doing that, improving that that show-up time or the sign-up time, it's time well spent. Like that's saving maybe four or five sales meetings or calling them or trying to rebook a sales call or a demo call, isn't it? All that time could be sliced by just doing a short video. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's funny. I'm writing a course right now about how to build super fans. And in that oh, course, oh my gosh, that, I want to read that. <laughs> I'll definitely, I'll definitely be sharing it. And in that course, I just share a, a couple simple pieces of math. I say I use Bonjoro as an example, and in that I say we have you know forty nine thousand customers, mm. and I give our average value of our customers, and then I give our value of our top one percent because every business is going to have some people that refer more, spend more, etc. Yeah. I say those are kind of our our super fans, if you will. And I say, look, if we took our total customer base and we made 10% of those people super fans, that adds $12 million to our bottom line, that calculation. Because our average customer is like say 750, our super fan is 3,200. And so I share that with people to say, how much man hours are worth that type of impact? So people start to think of it in the context of how much a super fan or a really strong advocate can bring to your brand you know, I always encourage people, almost every business that's out there, they have some advocates, some people that are out there on social media and talking about them. That's referring friends. That's always their fan person that hops in and gives them that rah, rah. What would it look like for your business if you had 10, 20, 50 of those people? It can be a game changer. And that starts to change your mm. thought process on your, your time to, to value impact. Yeah, because one of the, I ran a, a webinar earlier in the year called Building Your Stage. And I used a Seth Godin quote, which is that he says, you just need a hundred people who are completely sold out for your business idea and who you are and your business will grow. And people are often amazed at that because they go, I need thousands and all this stuff. But you're right. If it's super fans, that 100 people or whoever, if they're powerful for you and they're pushing your name out, that can be enough. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's it's a hugely impactful thing and, and it's a compounding it's a compounding kind of economics when you have when you have those advocates. So I've written in big letters on my notes, which I've been taking all the way through. For those of you that are watching the video one, when I'm looking down like this, it's because I'm I'm writing notes and 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 getting cool stuff. But one of the things I've put on here is Rachel, you really have to upgrade your Bonjour account. <laughs> <laughs> so um Casey tell me if people want to give Bonjour a go like I know I don't know if I, I know that when I I tried it first there was like a free five five goes I don't know if that's still there or whatever but is there is there a trial period of people because I think often if you think about how it could work and then you try it for a, a little bit to see what the impact is it gives you kind of a confidence level of how that works. So how do people kind of, if they want to sign up and give it a go or, um, and then what sort of cost or how does it work if people want to give it a go and where would they find it? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just go to bonjour.com forward slash pricing, you can go to any of the plans and you can trial them completely for free, no credit card, just a name and an email and you get two weeks. So oh, that's good. Two people. weeks. That's different. Two okay, weeks. that's You can do a lot yeah. of videos in two weeks. You can do a lot of videos in two weeks. You can access any of the plans and no credit cards. There's no like you'll randomly get charged. I love so it. All people is have exactly you said, have some specific idea in mind, mm. some either cohort of users that you can upload or connect into one of your systems and start there and just have a goal in mind. Maybe it's around response rate. Maybe it's around click through. Maybe well, you set whatever goal makes sense for you, but use that as a way to validate. And you know, one of the things that I've taught our sales agents um, on my team to do our best way to sell Bonjour is I say, do your existing process, 50% of your process, do it exactly how you're doing it. For 50% of your process, try Bonjour. Mm -hmm. and keep track of how long it takes you and then come back and tell me how it went. And if, if it drives more calls or more sales or whatever your objective is, awesome. Then that, that's all we need, right? It kind of sells itself yeah. in that context. So definitely, if people are curious about this as a channel, get in there. Um, our team has a bunch of resources to help you out, lots of case studies and things to, to help kind of guide. Um, more than happy to, to help support you in that. So I, I really want to, I, I always add a little bit at the end where I kind of talk through applications, but it's too important to add it to there. I really want to say that I, I want people to give Bonjour a go. I think it's really clever. It's perfect for small businesses. 
But please, if you're going to download it, just spend you know an hour, even if it's just an hour, just thinking about how you're going to play it first. Because otherwise, you're going to download it, you're not going to use it, and then you'll go, oh, I don't know, it's too busy or oops a daisy. It is an app that has tremendous power, but you have to have a plan to use it. So do that and then download it and really make use of it because it is such a powerful thing. And um, I'm so, I was so excited that you agreed to be on this podcast because I have honestly raved about Bonjuro for about three and a half years. Like I talk about it every MapIt event I do. Um, I, I do. I often do a live test during that time and send a Bonjuro to someone in the audience and I, I show them how easy it is. Um, I love it. And so I, I want people to use this because personalization is such an important part of trust building and it's such an easy way to do it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. We're super grateful to have you uh, on this journey with us um, since almost the start, it sounds like. And so that's amazing. Um, we're super, super appreciative of that. Yeah. And thank you so much um, for being on here today too, Casey. Do you want to tell us uh, what would be the link or the easiest way for people to come and find Bonjoro if they want to give it a go? Yeah, um, they can just go bonjoro, B-O-N-J-O-R-O.com. And I, I, we can give you a link that you can share with people um, if they want to just click directly in through the show notes or whatever. Um, but that's honestly, you can just go straight to the website. And from there, there's a little button to start a trial or you can do it from the pricing page um, and you're in and you can start testing it out and Perfect. kind of go on the journey. Thank you so much for being part of today. I have one final question. It's a bear, right? The logo? Yes. Okay, cool. Sometimes I, I explain it as a monkey and then I'm like, no, I don't think it's a monkey. It's a bear. It's the cutest little logo on your phone too. Yellow makes you feel better, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, our, it's our mascot, Joro the bear. Oh, he's very gorgeous. So no, thank you so much. Um, it's been a huge pleasure and I am so excited. Um, we're recording this a few weeks before it comes out and I'm going to be like, oh, I want to talk about it now. So I'm just going to have to hold back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, brilliant. Thanks again. I really appreciate always sharing with people about um, personal video and just kind of building human connections is something I'm really passionate about. So fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, I got really excited during the episode because I was already a bit of a fan of Bonjuro, but now I think I'm a super fan. In fact, uh, I recorded this about three or four weeks before it came out, um, and you're listening to it today, but um, today when I recorded it, uh, episode five came out. We have a worksheet on there for the episode that I ran that day, which is Narrow the Arrow, and um, it's one that you download and, and you can then I get your email address. So I have been sending Bonjuro to everybody that has been getting that worksheet and oh my gosh I'm getting the loveliest replies because I get really excited when I hear someone who's listened to the podcast and it's the only way they can get that worksheet so it's making me feel pretty cool and happy and um, and it's made them feel happy too so you know hey if you want to get a bonjour from me you can download that worksheet as well if you want go hunt it out and, um, and give it a go but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, bonjour but not so much just bonjour just that whole idea of personalization. I love marketing automation. And when we think about MapIt, M-A-P-I-T, I talked about this in episode two when I talked about how MapIt came about. Uh, the Or episode one, I think it was for that. Um, but the, the P is for promote. And obviously, promotion is something that you can do to a group of people, a long, large group of people. But the two things that really nail the, the fandom and the, the coming back is the two, the IT, the invest and trust, building trust in the people that choose to follow us and interact with us and showing investment, showing we care. And how better a way, cheaper, easy, quick way to do that than sending a personalized video. Now, if that's something that's not for you, if you went, I'm not doing that, Think about other things you can do to show personalization. What sort of things can you do to show people that you're valuing them? How can you do that so that people know that it's just you? Like, I love handwritten notes. I love anything that shows me that it's not just a printout or an automated thing that feels like it's really generic. And making a way to do that to make people feel important and special is a game changer when we're a small business. Because like Casey said, you know, when when we're competing about big businesses, the thing that can differentiate us to them is that real personal touch. So my challenge to you is to think about what that could be for you for your business today. And if it is bonjour, if you think that it is that, please do go and give it a go, but do take Casey's and my advice and just give yourself some time to plan out what you might use it for, 
Think of a specific thing that you can go and try and test it out on and then start using it like that. I am actually spending this afternoon upgrading my account <laughs> because I really want to see an improvement and see myself doing that. Now, um, if you're interested in getting some more in-depth one-to-one information from me and help, um, you can come to our free events. You just Google on Eventbrite for Identify Marketing. We have fortnightly events. They're called the Becoming Confident series. And it, depending on when you're listening to this, they, they basically, there's six of them and they just go in a cycle every fortnight. And I would love you to become um, someone who can come and ask questions and be part of those things there. Um, that's my way also of giving a bit of personal one-on-one so it's not just me talking to you and you listening, even though with Casey, that was pretty good, I have to say. And also, obviously, you can come and be part of our Map It group on Facebook. It's Map It Marketing. Come along and join in there. I share lots of information and intel and in-depth things where you can, again, ask questions and get support for your business. Um, I'm really looking forward to next week. We've got an amazing guest for you next week. Um, her name is Jo Murphy, and she is a digital ad nomad. She has given so much value into Facebook groups over the years, and I'm a bit of a fangirl, to be honest. Um, I'm a bit shy about meeting her because I've read her material for two years, and it's just absolutely incredible. And we're going to talk about how to improve your organic social media and improve your marketing so that you're ready for Facebook ads and Google AdWords. So Um, I'd love you to check into that. But until then, have a great week. Think about how to be a human-to-human contact in a digital age. And we'll check in next week. Thanks for tuning in today to Map It Marketing with me, Rachel Claver. Make sure you hit subscribe in your podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you want notes or information about today's podcast, go to rachelclaver.com slash podcast for more information. 